is that the blood that he shed for us at the cross for our sins, we know what color that was. We, there's no dispute. The blood was red, and the blood was sinless, and the blood was perfect. And it is that blood that washes away our sins. If you've never trusted in Christ for your eternal salvation, the Bible says now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. The Bible says the day you hear his voice, whether through him speaking to you directly or speaking to you through someone else, the day you hear his voice, don't harden your heart because you can only come to Christ when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you to draw you. The day you hear his voice, don't harden your heart because... You can't come to Jesus just on your own. Oh, I think I'll come to Jesus in 20 years after I've made a couple million dollars. Because in 20 years, if the Holy Spirit is not speaking to your heart, you won't be able to come to Jesus. You can only come to Jesus as the Holy Spirit is drawing you. You can only come to Jesus. Let me say that again. You can only come to Jesus as the Holy Spirit is drawing you. If the Holy Spirit is not drawing you, you can't. Come to Jesus because it is an act of God. No, Jesus said, no man can come to me except the spirit of my father draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. So the Bible says in Hebrews, the day you hear his voice, harden not your hearts as they did in the provocation in the wilderness in the Old Testament. When they provoked the Lord, they proved the Lord for 40 years. And most of the people in the wilderness did not cross into the promised land only Joshua and Caleb and people 20 and under the day you hear his voice whether he speaks to you directly or whether he speaks to you by me or someone else harden not your heart I, I can't emphasize that enough because if you say well I'm going to give my life to the Lord when I, after I have a little fun and after I make a million dollars and after I sleep with you know hundred beautiful women, I'll give my life to the Lord. You're playing with eternity because suppose after you sleep with a hundred beautiful women or a hundred good looking men, suppose the Holy Spirit after that is not drawing you or speaking to you. I know we live in an age of grace. I, I know we're in the dispensation of grace. I get that. But Jesus said, nobody can come to me except the spirit of my father draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. We see the Holy Trinity right there. No one can come to me except the Holy Spirit draw him, the spirit of my father draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. So if, if you're going to if you're going to take a chance and wait till you're uh, 86 years old. To give your life to Christ, number one, there's no guarantee you'll be 86. Ask, um, ask uh, um, um, the, the young man who just died at age 43 from Black Panther. There's no guarantee that you're going to live to be 86 because tomorrow, tomorrow is not promised unto you. Um, I'm, I'm, you know Black Panther. You've probably never seen the movie. I'll talk to you about it a little later. There's no guarantee you'll live. My, my daddy died at 45. And if you live to be 86, suppose the Holy Spirit stops drawing you because you've already resisted his grace, his drawing, you've already resisted it 18 times. Now you get, now here you are 80 or 76 or 86 or 52, and the Holy Spirit is, is no longer speaking to you, no longer drawing you. you. You can't come to the Lord on your own. It's a working of the Holy Spirit. You cannot come to God on your own. You can come to religion. You can come join the church and put your name on the roll. You can do all the outward superficial things that we do. But you can't come to God unless there's a moving of the Holy Spirit. I couldn't come to God unless there was until there was a moving of the Holy Spirit in my heart. And on May 20th, 1979, I bent my sinful knees and said, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner all defiled. I, I trust that you'll take these sins away from me and you'll own me as your child. Glory to, woo, I felt that and it happened, what, 40-something years ago. Glory to the Lamb of God. 
So I, I hope that we've ad adequately dealt with this question number five. Is there biblical justification for believing that Jesus is white, black, etc.? I was reading a book. Um, 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 I'm, I haven't read the book, but I downloaded it. And I was reading ex excerpts, and then I'll close. Uh, the name of the book is uh, Jesus Had Negro Blood. And so the guy in the book appears to be all scholarly and has some look like some good information. But then here's where he messed up. He said that Jesus is descended from Abraham through Ishmael. Remember, Abraham, there was a famine in the land. Abraham went down to Egypt to escape the famine. Uh, Abraham said to his wife, tell people you're my sister. He said to his wife, Sarah, tell people you're my sister. She was good looking. She was fine. And Abraham said, tell people you're my sister, because the Egyptians were known to take people's wives from them and to sometimes kill the people, the husbands. And Pharaoh, you know, they, they weren't practicing monogamy. Pharaoh could have as many wives as he wanted to. So, so Abraham said to Sarah, when, when we get down to Egypt, um, do me a favor. To tell people you're my sister, because if you don't, they're going to take you. And they're going to kill me in the pride. God had made these promises to Abraham, but he was still growing in his faith, right? So Abraham was a man, a man of faith, but he also had his moments of fear where his faith faltered. It describes us, doesn't it? Tell, t -t Tell them you're my sister. So sure enough, they get to Egypt. And uh, Abraham says, uh, that fox, <laughs> that fine, you know, as we used to call it, that fine slim. That fine hammer over there, that's my sister. So, because the men had recommended Sarah to Pharaoh, like, you, you know, because they, you know, the, the king's servants are always trying to kiss up to the king, right? Live forever, right? And they recommended her to Pharaoh. They said, man, it, it is fine, this is fine. Uh, just showed up. And so Pharaoh took her, but the Lord came to Pharaoh in a dream that night and said, um, Pharaoh, uh, you better not lay a hand, sexually speaking, on Sarah, or she was Sarai at that time, for she's another man's wife. If you touch her, we're going to have problems. This is God speaking to Pharaoh. God can speak to anybody. You don't have to be in covenant with God for God to speak to you. He can speak to anybody. So he's speaking to Pharaoh here. And Pharaoh said, Lord, I didn't know this. Abraham, Abraham, he was Abram at the time. She said, he said that that's his sister. And God said to Pharaoh, you're right, I know. And so here's a long story short. Pharaoh ended up giving Abraham or Abram a lot of uh, cattle and slaves, including female slaves. And Abram left Egypt, and, and, and but one of the female slaves that, that he gave her was Hagar. She was an Egyptian slave. So Abraham, because he went down to Egypt to, to leave the famine, he ended up in all this trouble because he said that uh, Sarah was his sister. When she is, she was his sister. They had the same father, but not the same mother. I believe it was. So she was his half sister. But he 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 says, you know, say you're my sister, so they won't kill me, whatever. But he ends up having all these cattle and men and women, slaves, etc. He became richer partially because of, you know, his lie. But one of the slaves was probably Hagar. And remember, Sarah and Abraham were childless, and God had given Abraham a promise that out of your loins I will bless the nations of the earth, etc. And I guess they got impatient as we often do when God makes us a promise, and we try to help God. And Sarah said, and this was, this was culturally acceptable at that time. This, this was culturally acceptable. And there was no law of Moses at the time. So this was, this was something that was culturally acceptable, that if a man's wife couldn't give him children, the man could take the, one of the concubines, one of the slaves, etc. And so Sarah, it was her suggestion. She said, why don't you take Hagar and go into her? And, and that's how we'll help God to achieve this. And Abraham said, well, okay. Sound like a plan. <laughs> so 
Hagar gets pregnant and has Ishmael. Sarah, seeing the error of her way, she got jealous. But the point is, Ishmael became the father of other nations, of the Arab nations. But this guy in this book, that's what the, the point I was trying to get to, the guy in the book, Jesus had Negro blood, he's making all these points, and then he said Jesus is descended from Abraham through Ishmael. No, he's not. Jesus is descended from Abraham through Isaac, through Jacob, through Judah. Jesus, the Bible says, is from the tribe of Judah. Jesus is descended through the line of Shem. Remember, Noah had the three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Jesus is descended through Shem, through Abraham, through Isaac, through Jacob, through Judah. Remember, Jacob had 12 sons by like three different women, Rachel, Leah, and I uh, uh, can't remember the third woman. And all the women were fighting over, you know, I want to sleep with Jacob tonight. And they were taking mandrakes, which were thought to be an aphrodisiac. And, all. oh, no, Jacob. And Jacob's, J Jacob's saying, hey, hey, it's all the way live, you know. <laughs> okay, who's next? Who's up tonight? And so Jacob ends up having these 12 sons. One of them is Judah. And out of Judah, eventually comes uh, David, etc., and Christ. He's descended from Judah. He's not descended from Ishmael. But this guy who's supposedly, you know, a scholar and all that, and I'm reading it. I'm, you know, I downloaded it to Kendo, 99 cents on Amazon Prime. You know, I down. Oh, let me see. He says Ishmael is descended from, uh, Jesus is descended from Ishmael. This proves that Jesus had Negro blood and blah, blah. Jesus is not descended from Ishmael. If he were, I would, I, I would tell you that he is. The Bible says that in Isaac shall your seed be called. The promises come from Abraham through Isaac, not through Ishmael. God did make promises concerning Ishmael. But the promise of the seed, the Messiah, Yahshua, Hamashiach, Joshua, Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, those promises come through Isaac, Jacob. Read the genealogy. I know genealogies are, are sexy and interesting. I know that. But you've got to, because you're going to have people out here, oh, Jesus is descended from Ishmael. And he's a black man. If he is black, it's not because of that, because he's not descended from Ishmael. He's descended from Judah. Remember, if the, uh, I'm going to um, go to Genesis 49, and then I'm going to close. Right before Jacob died, he prophesied to all his sons. Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Ishmael is not among these 12 sons. He says, uh, Reuben, he gets on Reuben, because Reuben, Re Reuben, he says, Reuben, uh, I'm not going to put the blessings on you because you went into your father's bed and defiled it. He says, Simeon and Levi. He says, Judah. Verse 8, Genesis 49, 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Doesn't Judah mean praise? Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies, and thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp wealth being the offspring of a lion from the prey my son thou art gone up he stooped down he couched as a lion and as an old lion who shall rouse him up verse 10 is the key and then i'm done the scepter the ruling staff of authority of the a king would have a scepter right a queen would have a scepter and you couldn't approach the king or the queen unless they pointed their scepter at you or you get your head cut off that's why esther said remember esther Esther said, I'm going to see the king. If I perish, if he doesn't point his scepter at me, I'm going to see him anyway. If I perish, right, let me perish. Because it, when, when a king had the scepter, they had to point their scepter at you. That's why the Bible says about Jesus, a scepter of righteousness is the, is, oh my God, I feel like preaching. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of his kingdom.
Glory to the Lamb of God. The, look at verse 10, and I'm going to try my best to end this. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. That's a prophecy of the coming of the Messiah. Let me read it to you again. Let me start at verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. Isn't Jesus called the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? From the prey, P-R-E-Y, from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter, the ruling authority. Remember, again, let me say it again. You couldn't approach the king or the queen unless they pointed their scepter at you. Again, that's why Esther said, oh, I'm going to see the king. You remember Esther and Mordecai and Han Haman was trying to destroy the Jews and and, 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 and Mordecai said to Esther, you know, uh, such a, uh, I can't really quote the scripture, but something about, the, you know, such a time as this, you know, think not that you'll be able to, you know, hide uh, from what's going on. And I'm terribly paraphrasing the scripture. And, then, and that's when Esther said, I'm going to see the king. And if I perish, let me perish. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And it goes on to say other things. Let me read it. Binding his foal unto the... No, I won't read it. And then I'm going to read something else, and then read something. <laughs> and then read something. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you, we thank you for the privilege, Lord. You didn't have to reveal your son unto us. You did not have to reveal your son unto us, Lord. Thank you for the privilege, hallelujah, of mentioning your name in the name of your dear son, Jesus Christ, our only Lord and Savior, of the house of David, tribe of Judah. The scepter, hallelujah, glory to God. Glory, Jacob prophesied that. He was about to die. And he propped himself up on his staff. He held off death by the grace of God. He said, come here, boys. He prophesied to each of his sons. Some prophecies were, you know, hey, and some of them were like, mm. especially Reuben. He said, Reuben, you went into your father's bed. And uh, uh, mm, we've got problems here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to know that you love us and that no one is superior to anyone else, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to know that you so love the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in you will not perish, but have everlasting life. For you did not send your Son to the world to condemn the world, for the world was already condemned, but that we, through your dear Son, Jesus, might be saved. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Blessed be his name forever. We will continue on Thursday night uh, with uh, our discussion. Uh, now, I've got it set up here on Zoom. If anybody wants to log into Zoom and join our discussion and ask some questions, you can do that. Uh, I've been posting the Zoom key is 993-266-1043. Uh, and the password is 0R6P1R. If anybody wants to log in, I've got Zoom running here. If anybody else wants to log in to Zoom and, uh, hey, I've got this question or I've got this, uh, you know, here's a good point, etc., uh, I invite that. The question we'll pick up with on uh, Thursday, Lord willing, is it's question number seven. What might be the rationale? This is going to be a good one. What might be the rationale for the mostly white Christians' unwavering support for President Trump? What might be their rationale? Is it all racism? 
or is it possibly this and possibly that? Leave that alone. Come over here. We're getting ready to pray, okay? All right. What might be the rationale for the mostly white Christians' unwavering so support for President Trump? Mm -hmm. is, every, every, is every Christian who supports Trump a racist? Is it fair to say that, or might there be other reasons, including that reason? All right, go ahead and pray for us. Go ahead and pray. Um, uh, what is it? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. What else? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you, Lord willing. We'll see you Thursday evening, sun, uh, Thursday evening at 8 p.m. for the truth of the gospel. You'll be strong. Keep wearing that mask. Keep wearing that mask. You'll be strong and you'll be careful about being in large gatherings, etc. Yeah. We're Just headed into the flu season now. I'm normally not I'm normally not a flu shot guy, but I got a flu and a pneumonia shot uh, last week. We're headed into the flu season now, so this this could get this could get ugly. So uh, keep wearing your mask, especially when you're when you're in the supermarket or whatever. Try to avoid ga gatherings with uh, you know many people. Don't, don't let these politicians, um, you know, oh we're we're we we're around the corner. We're we've got it beat. No, we don't have it beat. Papa. Yeah, baby. Um, can you just always say, can, can, are you finished? Mm -hmm. Hi, so can I have my iPad? Yeah, you can have her iPad. He's he waiting on me to get finished so he can get Meemaw's iPad. God bless you, my beloved. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. Love you. Love you.